Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Repeat offender Falcons get less punishment than 49ers for clerical salary cap error. When pointing out that, if the Patriots had done what the Falcons had done the Patriots would have suffered a far greater punishment, some will respond by saying the Patriots are repeat offenders. Well, the Falcons are, too. However, both times they've broken the rules in the past decade, they've gotten a slap on the wrist. In 2015, they lost only a 2016 fifth-round pick for getting caught using fake crowd noise at home games. They also were fined $350,000, and Rich McKay was suspended from the competition committee for three months. This time around, it was a 2025 fifth-round pick and a $250,000 fine, along with a $50,000 fine for GM Terry Fontenot, for tampering with three different players during the 52-hour negotiation window. Meanwhile, the 49ers had a clerical error in their salary cap accounting. And they suffered a greater punishment than either of Atlanta's infractions. For the $75,000 mistake, the 49ers lost a 2025 fifth-round pick and had their 2024 fourth-round pick downgraded by four spots. The 49ers' violation had no competitive impact. They remained under the cap, and the league found no ill intent in the making of the accounting mistake. I know, I know. The Falcons only made travel arrangements. That's the official version. I choose not to buy it, because it conflicts with what Kirk Cousins said on the day he signed the contract. The Atlanta punishment was always going to be driven by the quality of the investigation. We don't know, and won't know, how seriously the NFL explored the facts. We don't know, and won't know, whether it was just a matter of accepting self-serving accounts at face value or the kind of I'm the captain now zeal that the Patriots experienced in hashtag Deflategate. Regardless, there's something wrong with this picture. The draft pick consequence for a $75,000 clerical error shouldn't be worse than the punishment for cheating with crowd noise or for tampering with three different players. It proves yet again that the NFL is inconsistent when it comes to the application of its rules and that it makes decisions based not on precedent but situation. Twice since 2015, the Falcons have gotten a break. Earlier this year, the 49ers got the shaft. Right guard might be 49ers' most intriguing position battle in training camp. The 49ers have a number of different possible outcomes at right guard, all of them provocative and important. Between free agency and the 2024 NFL draft, the number one consensus need the San Francisco 49ers had to address appeared to be the offensive line, specifically the right side of it. While the Niners opted not to grab a clear-cut upgrade over incumbent right tackle Colton McKivitz, they did muddy the depth chart waters at right guard by adding former Kansas lineman Dominic Pooney in round three. Sure, it's been a San Francisco strategy to draft players for needs a year in advance. But Pooney's presence casts a long shadow over what could be one of the more interesting position battles heading into training camp this July. A year ago, the 49ers employed a rotation at right guard between lineman Spencer Burford and John Feliciano, the former receiving the lion's share of snaps, 79.4%. That said, Burford was also primarily responsible for some key missed blocks in the overtime Super Bowl loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, which drew some rather shocking ire from Feliciano in the immediate aftermath. Burford, a 2022 fourth-round pick out of UTSA, now finds himself in a spot where he has to defend his starting job against not only Feliciano, but also Pooney. And the Niners may not again entertain a rotation heading into 2024. Kyle Posey at Niners Nation collected a swarm of evidence and material about this provocative camp battle, coming to the conclusion that San Francisco must avoid heading into yet another year with a rotation at right guard. Contained therein was an accurate description about what Burford's strengths are but in contrast against his weaknesses, including a relative inability to see the big picture, if Burford makes the mental jump where he's consistently looking at each play from the big picture, we'll be talking about an extension next offseason. 
If not, an experienced athlete with a similar skill set awaits behind him. Posey pointed out how consistency, not ability, was Burford's biggest issue. It's not just a matter of strength or proper blocking, but it's also about technique and awareness. Those areas have been lacking, which might explain why Pune was the pick in round three last April. And Pune is the specific player about whom Posey was referring when discussing an experienced athlete behind Burford. Having bona fide roles is beneficial. Sure, depth matters, and no one will complain about getting more snaps. But, divvying up the snaps at right guard between Burford, Feliciano, and now Pune only fuels that inconsistency that plagued the former over the course of 2023. And that inconsistency carried over into the Super Bowl, where it was on display for the rest of the world to see. Insider predicts outcome of 49ers, Brandon Ayuk contract standoff. NFL insider Albert Breer of Sports Illustrated remains convinced the San Francisco 49ers and wide receiver Brandon Ayuk will come to terms on a contract extension before the start of the 2024 regular season. My buddy Mike Silver of the San Francisco Chronicle has the San Francisco 49ers offer at a new money average of $26 million per year, Breer said about the Ayuk situation in a mailbag published on Thursday. My sense is that's getting in the neighborhood of where they'll have to lock up Brandon Ayuk, whom they really do value and love. Kyle Posey of Niners Nation was among those who pointed out that Ayuk, who was in the final year of his rookie contract, skipped San Francisco's mandatory minicamp last week. According to Posey, 49ers insider Matt Barrows of The Athletic said at the time that there's no indication that the 49ers will forgive Ayuk for absences as it pertains to fining the 26-year-old for skipping the mandatory sessions. That could change, however, if the two sides ink an agreement sooner rather than later. I think the final number, if I had to guess, will wind up being $29 million per year, which would put Ayuk past the Miami Dolphins' Jalen Waddell and Detroit Lions' Amonare St. Brown, and still behind the Minnesota Vikings' Justin Jefferson by quite a bit, which would be understandable, Breer continued. Per ESPN Stats, Ayuk finished the first regular season that featured quarterback Brock Purdy as a Week 1 starter with team bests of 75 receptions, 105 targets, and 1,342 receiving yards. Ayuk shared the team lead of seven touchdown catches with two others. The interesting thing from there would be how the Niners react when calls start coming in on Debo Samuel, Breer concluded. 49ers general manager John Lynch suggested throughout the spring that he will hold on to Ayuk and Samuel through this fall as the 49ers attempt to claim the title that has eluded them during a run that's included a pair of Super Bowl losses and two conference championship defeats. Samuel is signed through the 2025 season but could become a trade target in part because Lynch knows he's going to have to pay Purdy as soon as next offseason. DraftKings Sportsbook routinely lists the 49ers as the betting favorites, plus 250 as of Thursday afternoon, to represent the NFC in Super Bowl 59. On paper, San Francisco may have the goods to achieve such a goal, with or without Samuel on the roster. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon Ayuk? Leave your opinion in the comments.